Hey, welcome to my channel, Treetop Flight, where I'm documenting the build of my RANS S21 outbound. This is the third episode of my wing build. I was hoping it was going to be my final episode, but there was too much content, and I'm trying to keep the videos under 15 minutes. Uh, I've already split out the pedo tube install, uh, which I've already posted, so check that out if you want. In this video, I start with a riveting discussion on riveting. Uh, riveting is a new skill set I learned when I started building the plane, and there's a lot to be learned just in riveting itself. So I pass on a couple tricks that I learned in the beginning of the video. Then I'll get into the gap seal, uh, ailerons and flaps, uh, skinning the top of the wing, riveting the top, um, as well as running some wires, hoses, cables, etc. I end the video with about a half dozen open questions of how to, uh, which comes up, and I'll answer that in the next video, uh, as well as uh, wrap up uh, the wing, close it up, and then I'll also do a review of my build time for the wings, as well as my build time to date for the entire project. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Leave some comments if you'd like. Thanks a lot. This is probably a good opportunity to talk a little bit about riveting since I just put about 500 rivets into my wing. Uh, I'm going to rivet this rib. It's the uh, tip rib, uh, which I wasn't sure. I told you a minute ago whether I should rivet it, and the answer is yes, I should. I come to my diagram to figure out which rivet I use, and if you notice, the ribs across here are the 41s, the Cherry Q 41s. Uh, the ribs along the aft spar are the 43s and the forward spar we use the stainless steel flush. But if you look, sometimes the end ribs are different and as I'm looking at my chart, uh, I've certainly got the stringer rivets. I've got these rib rivets but sometimes the ends are a little different. So not being exactly sure, what I do is I, I use my, my measuring tool, which can be airplane spruce sells these for about four or five dollars. And if you measure, like I'll, I'll use this as an example. This is my, my aft spar and a piece of rivet. I put my tool on it. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I put my tool on it, measuring the thickness of my spar. Nope, I'm going to have to set the camera up to do this. Okay, with the camera set up, I take my tool here, I put it, the little hook part at the bottom of the aluminum, which includes the spar and the skin. I drop this little sleeve down, and that gives me a measurement of the distance my rivet needs to pull. In this case, it's uh, somewhere around two. And then you've got a chart that basically tells you the range in millimeters. This is in millimeters. And you can see why they're calling for the 43s. Uh, it's, a, it's a larger diameter. When I go through a skin and rib and pull it up, let's see if I drop it down, hold it in place. Come on, pull it out. I'm at 1.6, which is a 41. So it does confirm that the 41s that are used on these ribs are also used on these as that's the thickness of my aluminum. Um, you'll find that sometimes there's some confusion on which rivet. Having one of these to double check is a great idea. And again, I'm not a pro rivet. This is my first build. This is just what I've learned. So I'm, my disclaimer here is that this is not instructional video. This is just what I'm finding out that other builders may get some use out of. So, you know, don't take me to court over this if you use the wrong rivet. This the next step is to install your gap seals. You've got two, uh, one on the outboard, inboard part. They attach to the uh, aft spar. I wasn't even sure what a gap seal was, but in looking at some of the diagrams that you get, the gap seal creates a barrier between your uh, trailing edge of your wing and your flaps and ailerons, I'm assuming to keep disruption of wind flow. Um, so again, you learn as you go. So these will attach to the aft spar. The first thing you do is you uh, check all your diagrams and you're gonna remove the tabs. You've got two 
uh, two gap seals. They've got a whole bunch of these tabs on them, which is typical of a lot of the wing components and tail feather components. So the first thing you do is remove those. I'll use my Dremel to take those off and buff them down. The next thing I've done is I've put the gap seal in and I've laid it in underneath the skin and I've clicked it to the opening holes. And the two measurements we're gonna take right now is we wanna make sure our wing is still level um, and square. So I'm rechecking it. I checked it at the other end. I did have to move my shims in just a little bit more to go on slightly at a level. So we're at 12.2, which is the same as the other end. The next thing we wanna do is check that this gap seal is a straight line, because before we match drill these holes, see how, we, see how that'll come up? So we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that is a straight line with the, with the wing skin and come down, and then we're gonna match drill the holes uh, through the gap seal and then also into that um, aft spar because the aft spar did not have holes for the skin at this point. I have uh, transfer drilled the gap seal with the number 30 all the way down the rear spar. Uh, a little change in plans. I was not going to finish this wing uh, and I was going to start working on the second wing because I'm waiting for some internal parts to put the bottom skin on. But even before I put the wing away, the next step, number 26, is to temporarily install the flap and aileron to check for clearance. Well, I haven't built the flap or aileron, so I guess before I go any further on the wing, I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to put the flap and aileron together. Um, I think the video on that's going to be pretty short because it's... it's uh, two small wing surfaces and we've done a lot of those with the tail feathers in this so I, I don't think there'll be any new learning skills on the flap and aileron. I'm starting flap the uh, flaps and aileron construction. Uh, I'm not going to do a lot of videoing in this section because it's really a lot of the same. You got to bend your skins, lay out your assembly, rivet. Uh, there's not a lot of complication to this um, so I'm not going to do a lot of filming. I'm actually going to knock out all four uh, flaps and ailerons just to get them done uh, and then I'll start on the other wing. I finished the four flaps and ailerons. The next time I say I'm just going to knock these off and get back to you, slap me around a little bit. Uh, those took a while. Uh, the first aileron took me about 10 hours. The last flap took me about four hours. So I got better and better as, as the process seemed similar. But it was about 22 hours of labor or work time. Uh, to get the four flaps and ailerons done. Now back to the wing is kind of where I left off. Uh, the instructions are to temporarily mount an aileron and a flap on this is the left wing and check for clearance uh, with rivets and everything for the gap seal before I finish riveting. Um, the one thing I noticed is that these Glicos are protruding out so I can't attach the flap and aileron. I think someone else suggests and I've started to do it. I'm moving the Glicos to the inside poking out uh, so I've raised the, the wing up a little to get underneath there and I'll put the Clecos coming in from the other side so I can get those flaps and aileron on. Okay, I've got the uh, flaps and aileron on. I don't have the pull cranks hooked up, but I've got full range of motion and no contact. So it looks like we've got a wing. Same thing with the flap. Flaps work full range and I'm not getting any rubber or any contact. So it looks like we move on to the next step and we finish riveting up the uh, top skin. Okay, I've uh, riveted most of the top skin. Uh, I'm still riveting the gap seal and there's a couple little gotchas that I thought I would point out before I finished. Down here at the uh, end where you've got the strut connection, you've got uh, three rivets that go into this root rib. But it's not, I, actually that's not true. It's two rivets down here this up here, which I thought is a rivet, if you look at the guide really carefully, that's actually a 3 16th bolt that goes through there. Um, so don't, be, don't forget that that's not a rivet, that's a bolt. 
uh, because once you get this gap seal riveted in, you really can't get in there. The other thing is make sure you drill that out to 3 16 Some, Sometimes the holes won't take a bolt, and if you've got that gap seal uh, riveted, you're not going to be able to get a drill in there to size that for your 3 16 bolt. So make sure you do that before you uh, put your gap, rivet your gap seal on. Uh, the other little gotcha is the uh, instructions number uh, 31 they said rivet the gap seal uh, gap seal using appropriate rivets which are the uh, stainless steel 42s but then it says longer rivets must be used near the truss due to the rear spar but they don't tell you the, the rivets to use so i used my handy uh, rivet measurement which i say you got to get one and i measured the depth to be four millimeter uh, which is the 43s, the stainless steel 43s. So another little gotcha. Those are uh, those are up here where the truss where the truss doubler is. Here we've got those bolts. There's two two rivets that have to use the 43s. Then you got to drill out a couple holes here that aren't drilled. You got to match drills to 30s. Get those cleaned up before you rivet. But that's just a basic uh, 30 and the stainless steel 42 rivet. So other than that, we're going to finish riveting the gap seal. And then we're, we're done with the uh, top skin of the wing. Okay, the next step is uh, pretty quick. Uh, they send you some wood jigs that you've got to put the two by two in between them and, and make these wing jigs. They only take a few minutes. Then you flip the wing over, put them in the jigs, uh, clamp the jigs to the table, clamp the wing to the jig, and then check and make sure you're level at both ends. We got dead nuts level here. And I just measured the other end, we're at 0, 0.0, so we're right on as far as level. Um, I think the leveling is for putting the skin on. I've got a fair amount of work. I'm going to put the new pedo in. I've got to run my electrical wires, put some um, tubing in. So I've got a couple things to do before we skin this up. Um, but this was a step to get the wing turned over and start working on the guts. I've decided to upgrade my pedo tube. Uh, this is the Rans pitot tube that I ordered with the kit. Uh, I did put it together. This is an inspection cover. It uh, has a mounting plate that goes onto the inspection cover and then it mounts onto that plate with a bracket and then comes out and provides your, your ram air. Uh, the ram air then goes through the tube that I installed and back to your instrumentation. Uh, the problem with this one is it's, uh, it doesn't have angle of attack and it's not heated. Uh, so I went ahead and I purchased a Garmin pitot tube. This is heated, angle of attack, uh, was about $350, I believe. Uh, and then the mounting bracket, it will get mounted in the same place. I also had to order some extra tubing because I need a, an angle of attack tube as, as well as a ram air. And I'm going to have to make a bracket. So we're going to go through and read the directions. I've seen a couple videos on it. I think I've got it, but uh, we'll get started and and get this mounted uh, to the left wing. I've been involved in kind of the thinking stage of the next steps. What you find in a build, if it's your first time build, and I've seen some other videos, com videoers comment on this, is you spend a lot of time researching and thinking things through. There's not 100% one way to do it, and the manuals don't make it 100% clear, and there's options that you have. So let me kind of highlight where I'm at. I've run my wire, I'm using 18 gauge wire, uh, which fits the requirements from the FAA chart. Um, and I've got landing, I've got four wires for my, my tip lights, I got four wires for my landing lights, and these are all per the, the light specs. I've got my, my pitot gauge wire, this is actually 14 gauge, a little bit heavier because the pitot gauge is a heater, so it needed a little heavier wire. I did detach my pitot tube from that wire tie. I've got a second pitot tube I've got to run. So I've got to run that and I'm going to hang that a little differently. I actually 3D printed some grommet hangers. They may or may not come into place. Um, uh, I'm still not 100% sure. I've got to figure out how I'm going to tie my wires. At this point, I've just got them run. I've seen a couple different videos on how to do that. If you look over in the corner, I've run them through this rubber grommet at the top of this root rib, but I'm looking at others and apparently it doesn't go there. They go through the bottom. So I've got about 10 feet of extra wire for each 
because uh, I'm not 100% sure whether you splice them in after the wing or whether you run them all the way to the panel. So I've got them grouped by groups. I've got to label them, and there's a whole other research area on labeling wires. Uh, whether you use a label machine, I mean, once these are all color coded and documented, um, uh, these ends don't really need to be labeled because they're going to go into the color matching wires that came with the instrument. But of course, coming out this end, if I spend all the time labeling the ends of these things and then cut them off because in fact I'm going to splice them over the, the top of the wings and run a separate wire up front, I got to relabel everything again, so maybe I put a simple label on now and worry about the final label later. Um, but you can see there's just all these decision points that aren't 100% clear. So I am going to, my next step is to hang the pitot tubes, get this pitot bracket. I'm going to prime the pitot bracket because uh, it is going to be somewhat exposed to moisture, being that they have an opening for the pitot tube. So I'm going to prime that. Uh, I'm going to figure out my wire wraps hang these pitot tubes, figure out how I'm going to hang the pitot tubes, a couple different options, uh, get to work on my bracket, uh, I think everything else, oh, i got to figure out how I'm going to run the wires up here, can't just leave them hanging, so i got to figure some attachment to the rib here over to my light. So just a lot of figuring out. Uh, sorry to ramble on so long, but I'm just confronted with about a half a dozen how-tos, and I'm researching and watching videos, and it's just taken some time. Um, so I got to stop thinking and start moving forward. As I say, if you if you spend your life thinking about things, you won't get anything done. Um, but onward and upward. Thanks. All those questions and more get answered in my next video, where I wrap up the wing assembly. Thanks for watching.